in my late teens, I decided that I wanted to uh, become spiritual, and for some reason, I just gravitated back to, to the Jehovah's Witnesses, and I was um, a witness for 20 years. Now, um, 10 years ago, about 10 years ago, I stopped going to the meetings because I was disillusioned. So I have a background where I'm studying uh, and reading Velikovsky and things like that, but I'm also part of the, the Christian, what I call the Christian literalist historical uh, church, because they're based on a fiction, and which I will go into later, and it works beautifully. <laughs> it works beautifully with the fictional uh, law that uh, is called maritime and canon law, which is uh, running parallel, parallel with our uh, common law in the Western world. And all these fictions, as I will explain, come from Rome. Everything, a lot of it. See, people have been taught in the, uh, in the schools and, uh, and whatnot that uh, Rome fell in uh, 500, when the Huns destroyed uh, uh, Rome and they sacked Rome. And then there was the Holy Roman Empire, Empire with the Carolinians and they destroyed the Merovingians. Uh, the Pippins were also instrumental in setting up uh, and morphing the uh, Roman cult. So it's been morphing since it came from Chaldea, uh, from Babylonia. It's basically Babylonia. Um, but but it's, it's a counterfeit of that system too, really. Mm. It's, it's a pure, pure fiction. And... Um, it's been morphing, but um, as I will uh, go into the, the recent history of the 1400s and the 1500s when trusts were set up by the, by the, um, the Vatican through papal bulls and trusts were set up called Sestri KV Trusts and uh, the first one being in uh, 1455, I'll pull that up on my screen so, screen so I don't give any uh, wrong dates in it. I've got it all uh, lined up. Excellent. Um, in 1455, the first trust was called Romanus Pontifex. In 1481, the second trust, Aeterni Regis, which means the eternal crown. And in 1537, Convocation. These three trusts, these three Sestwi KV trusts, Sestwi meaning six, become and correspond to the tri tiara or the trirenium that the Pope wears and has been wearing since the time of Boniface in 1302. Now that triple crown, which used to be a double crown at the time of Boniface, um, represents the three trusts which claim all the property on the planet, all the, the people, the chattel, the cattle, on the earth, and all the souls. So the Holy See is salvaging the souls lost at sea. And so they administer their maritime law. And the maritime law is the commercial law which is also Vatican. You see, when, when people think that, that, um, that uh, the first incarnation of the Empire of Rome was from Julius Caesar to when the Huns destroyed Rome, then the second would be the Second Reich when the Holy Roman Empire existed for a thousand years and which uh, Napoleon Bonaparte ended. Then, of course, Hitler came along and initiated the Third Reich. It's all Roman. And it's all morphing. It's, that's why Hitler was uh, in, in bed with uh, Pacelli, uh, Pope, um, uh, look, his name slipped me at the moment. But was it Pope, Pope, Pope Pius? Uh, the... Pope, Pope Pius. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And they were, they, were, they were in bed together. And because it's always Roman, it's the Roman world. Look, um, their calendar dominates the whole planet. Uh, Russia resisted it until the Bolshevik, Bolshevik Revolution. Uh, England resisted it until 1751, then ceded, and then their whole calendar system changed. The whole world resisted because good people realised that Rome was just <laughs> was just taking over the whole world with this system. 
So the calendar dominates the whole world, the alphabet. You have a look at the Roman alphabet on every computer, um, digit board, um, uh, there's the, the Roman uh, alphabet, the Roman script. Now in, in Japan, uh, they have four alphabets. They have uh, kanji, katakana, hiragana, and they have one called romaji. They call it romaji because its origin is Ra. Mm. So, so in the east, in the west, in the north, in the south, all around the world, the calendar, which has enslaved mankind, the alphabet, and how many Latin languages are there? French, Spanish, Portuguese, of which are the biggest languages and the most widespread languages on the planet. If you put, combine all the Latin languages, of which uh, English is one, it's a sister language, it's absolutely a sister language of Latin, carries the Latin, it carries the Latin through and through. In fact, many times it's more Latin than Italian, which I speak, and I am Italian. Now, I speak all the Latin languages, except for Romanian. But if you look at those languages, they've carried that alphabet to the ends of the earth. They've carried the Roman um, historical Christ to the ends of the earth and their corporations with the conquistadors and the conquest of and the in imperialism and um, the conquest of all these uh, so-called savage indigenous peoples mm. and the conversion of these people. At, with, with the Bible in their left hand and the sword in the right, how many people perished because of this corporation of Christianity that has spread the earth. Now, it's all Rome. And not only is it the calendar, not only is it the canon law, which is sitting quite comfortable these days, side by side with canon law, and we think, uh, sorry, with common law, law of the land, which is our which is our law, which is who we are, and which is why people are, are, are awakening and turning to this concept of sovereignty and dominion, especially dominion, because we are free spirits and souls and flesh and blood, and we are not corporations. We have been corporatized by these three trusts. So when we are born, our informant parents tell the government that we are born and inform on us without our knowledge and the, the government registers and gives us a number and that number follows us for the rest of our lives. In fact, for 75 years that particular document lasts and what happens is the governments have um, used that without telling us to create a trust. So we have a set we can be trust and we have this trust without our knowledge. Most, there are people who do know, and there are people who are wealthy in this world who know about their trust and know how to use it to their advantage. But we, on the other hand, who haven't been told of the, the good use of, I mean, it's a great system. It's a fictional system, but it's a great system. If everybody knew how much power they had through their trust, and because of the fact that they are the beneficiaries of these trusts, the world would be a, so, a, a very, very different place. We would be in a much, much, much different place. And these monstrous governments, these fascist di dictatorships like the United States and how they're becoming, imperialist Rome at its best, at its very, very best, um, these things would not be around. It's because of our defaulting and our not being in honour and in competence that we haven't known the law and known what this birth certificate really means. When you register, regis means the king and you hand over your dominion to that king and you have entered into a contract, unwittingly, unwittingly. And um, when they summons you to their courts, these people are doing uh, commerce with your fictional name. And they send you an address, a, 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 a letter or a summons or an invitation to go to their place of commerce because they're going to offer you a service of adjudication. That's all they're doing. A magistrate has no jurisdiction in common law. 
none whatsoever. They are just there to offer a service of adjudication. And we, the sovereigns, are beginning to realise that we don't need that service. We don't need to contract with these people. They are, in fact, private corporations. And this is the message that is spreading of around this planet on all levels, on all levels. And people, and, and it's part of the awakening that is going on and the, what Plato called the anamnesis, the remembering, the time that we would remember who we are. And that's the thing that I, um, and that I teach with the uh, science of astrotheology, the holy science. I teach the as above, so below. And the science of uh, man, know thyself. Because this is in fact what this corporate Christianity, which is absolutely counterfeit and fictional, is persecuting. They are persecuting the knowledge of the science of the stars and the sun. And in fact, that is what the Gospels and all the holy legends and fairy tales and nursery rhymes and, and epic poems such as the Iliad, the Odyssey, the Metamorphosis of Ovid, and all the great literature, Aratus and the Phenomena, Marcus Manilius and Astronomica, all these great epic poems which they call the holy science. Because when you know the above, the stars above, then you know the stars that are inside each individual organism that we are, each individual body that we are. And this is the science that they have persecuted for so long with their fictional story. Absolutely. No, it's it's excellent. It's it's really interesting and, and obviously we're gonna kind of dive into the depths of this, if you will, as well, and, and uh, deconstruct some of these things and, and try to explain it. Uh, I think one point when uh, I was watching your lecture, obviously, that you have up on, on YouTube, it was specifically about the law here, and uh, you went into an interesting part that I, I don't think many people know about, and that is in regards to uh, papal bulls and a specific one. Uh, first off, maybe we can just talk about what a papal bull is, and then obviously get into this idea of unum sanctum and, and maybe you can describe for us what that actually is because um, that's an important one obviously oh yes yes um, now unum sanctum is the first express trust created in history now I would like to take this opportunity to point people to a gentleman in Sydney Australia I'm operating in Melbourne uh, by the name of Frank O. Collins, and he has a website which is connected to my website. He has four of them, and you can uh, connect to these through my website, which is called universaltruthschool.com. Universaltruthschool, one word, dot com. 